first law of thermodynamics states that energy can't be created or destroyed, it can be converted from one form to another, right? So that first law uh, is very fundamental in being able to understand that the energy inside our entire universe every day is the same today, tomorrow, before, always. It's always the same amount of energy. Um, the second law of thermodynamics is that the entropy of the universe is increasing. And that means that every day, the universe is becoming more chaotic place to live in. That's exactly what the second law tells us. The entropy of the universe is increasing. Now, that means spontaneous processes are happening right now that cause that disorder to actually happen. A spontaneous process can be defined as this. It will always cause the entropy. And entropy is abbreviated by the letter S. S for Centropy. I don't know. So S is entropy. The entropy of the universe, if it is increasing in a process, that means that the process is spontaneous. A spontaneous process, is, process makes a positive entropy increase or a randomness increase in the universe. But it's dependent on two things. It's dependent upon what the system is doing and how that affects the surroundings as well. Now, before I get into that, just think about these kinds of things. What has more entropy, water as a solid or water as a liquid? And you're saying, well, okay, now, water as a solid is a very ordered type of structure, but as a liquid, the water molecules are more chaotic. Absolutely. So, water at, uh, as a liquid has more entropy than water as a solid. And then how about water liquid as opposed to water gas? Water gas is totally chaotic. And so, it's going to have a lot more entropy, positionally, in space, than water liquid or water solid. Make sense? Yeah. And if somebody said to you, well, you put some sugar into water, uh, is that going to be an increase or a decrease in entropy? And you're going to go, well, it dissolves and then the molecules kind of spread and diffuse all the way through that solution. So that's an increase in entropy of the universe. That's a spontaneous process. Yeah. So, but a spontaneous process is dependent on these two things, the system and the surroundings and how they're affected. Now, Let's just get into a, one type of an example here, and let's use that one that we already had, where water as a solid is turning into water as a liquid. And the delta H equals, delta H equals 6.03 kilojoules, so the reaction is endothermic. Now here's the thing. What's happening to the system here, going from solid to a liquid? Well, what's happening is that there's a great change in the system entropy. This system under consideration is going to be a very positive increase in entropy. Now, in order for this to be a spontaneous process, this positive added to this number here, whatever this value of the, how the, the surroundings are affected gets added to this, that determines whether this is positive or not. Now, what's happening to the surroundings? Now, you've got to think about this. The surroundings, the delta S surroundings, is always something that can be arrived at by understanding heat flow. Heat flow is the domain of delta S surroundings. The system is what's happening to the molecules. So now think about this. This is an endothermic process. So what's happening to the environment around this equation if this reaction here has to gain energy, 6.03 kilojoules from its surroundings? Well, if it's gaining heat from the surroundings, this reaction, the surroundings are cooling down. And if the surroundings are cooling down, molecules are going slower. Faster moving molecules is more chaos and more entropy. Slower moving molecules is more order. And so what's happening here in the surroundings is that the molecules in the surroundings are becoming what? They are becoming less entropic. So that means then that this is a negative sign for this delta S for the surroundings because the heat flow is leaving and they're cooling down the molecules in the surroundings and those molecules slowing down greater order, that's negative entropy. Greater order is negative entropy. Entropy is or disorder. Negative entropy is order. The surrounding molecules are becoming more ordered. The system is quite disordered. Then which one wins? When does this process become spontaneous? When that system disorder is greater than the order that it produces in the surroundings. And you know something. This reaction here is totally temperature dependent. If it's below zero degrees Celsius, then this reaction is non-spontaneous. 
but then, which means a negative here. But if it's above zero degrees Celsius, the system actually is more entropic than the negative part uh, entropy of the surroundings, and you get a spontaneous reaction. So here's the thing. If you can understand what's going on here, and we can come up with some math, we can actually determine, and we can ascribe numbers to spontaneity, and be able to determine if something is, a, a reaction is spontaneous or not, and at what temperatures. So here comes some numbers.